You are now listening to the West Side of T H A AfterParty.com. Hi, I'm James Law Jr., producer and host of Extra Connection. Join me every Monday live at 7 p.m. Street Standard Time, where I bring on people from all walks of life. I will connect you with people, places, things, and ideas. You'll never know who will stop by. That's Extra Connections every Monday on the West Side of the After Party Radio. See you at the party. Connections. Extra Connections. 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 We are back. It's Extra Connections. I'm James Law Jr. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, it's Monday night at 7 p.m. Strict Standard Time. That means I am here and I am ready to talk and make connections with people, places, things, and ideas here on theafterpartyradio.com. That's right, folks. The, T-H-A, afterparty.com. Um, we are here and I have a great guest for you because you know me, I bring people in from all walks of life and I saw this guy on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a good place, you guys. That's a little, I've been making some really great connections <laughs> on LinkedIn. And this is another guy. I reached out to him, and he said yes. Um, his mom started this business later in life, just like I did. So I can relate to that. He's a graduate of UC Riverside. You were in medical school at one point? Uh, Pre-med. Pre-med, yeah. and you were doing music at one point. I was. We have that in common because yes. you did all that. But he's the CEO of a giant nail care company that many of you may know about, actually, and some people who are in the, <laughs> in the building knew already, Young Nails, Inc. And we're going to talk to him about the nail business, him, who is he, what's going on, what's going on in the nail business, and all of that, Habib Salo. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Super excited to be here. You are, so, you are such a nice guy. And I, I, I reached out to you, and you're just like, sure, I'll come on your show. I'll do it. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. You got to tell my team that at the office. I will talk. Yeah, please. I'll record, I'll record a video and just tell them. I'll send it to them. Um, now, he is based here in Southern California. You guys are in Anaheim, correct? We are. You're in Anaheim. But he's all over the place. And we're going to talk about what he does all over the place. And 
I want to say Young Nails is a professional nail care, nail care manufacturing company. Correct. But you also do talks on business marketing and strategy and that kind of stuff too, 100%. Right? So I want to first start. I did some research, and they were saying that the nail industry, just in the U.S., yep. last year did, I'm going to get this correctly, $8.36 billion. Sounds about right. And it's up from 2017, 2016, 2000, like it's going up. And that's just the U.S. Let me talk the rest of the world. So, I mean, nails. Nails is uh, such a small part of the body, right? Like, if you looked at percentages, it is, it's like almost nothing. Right. But, um, wow, how it employs so many people yes. and gives, like, yeah. jobs and careers. And, obviously, I'm fortunate enough to be in a position where I have a company um, – based off of that but yeah it's fascinating industry um the cosmetic business is it's totally insane and i mean that in the best way possible yeah. like i genuinely it's like hollywood it. same thing we're crazy i do it we're crazy it yes great. that's exactly right yes. and <laughs> i would i would say the beauty business is like there's a lot of similarity similarities there um but nails is fascinating it's yeah. like uh it's just like you've got hair, skin, and nails. Nails has always been looked at as like kind of put on the back burner beauty, but you know we, we kind of puff up our chest a little bit right. and fight our way through. Well, love exactly. Yes. Now I want to say okay. I'm gonna say this because we can. <laughs> straight man in the nail business. Correct. Which to me, I know there's straight men in the hair business, there's right. straight men in the beauty business. I mean, there's a lot actually in there. Right. But I was like, oh, I just didn't know much about the nail business, but you're a straight man in the nail business. Yeah, it is it is definitely <laughs> a rarity. Yes. Um, there's no question yeah. about it. It's uh, my brother and I, we we talk about it all the just time. Look alike, brother, folks. Yes, yes. Mm. When we're wearing hats, because he's actually bald. He is so. bald. more handsome brother right here. Right. We'll say that on camera. More I love this right. podcast. Yeah, Did see, I mention exactly. that? Exactly. I'm just gonna keep praising you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so yeah. So you said you and your brother talk about yeah. this. Yeah. So um, both of us in, in the industry, it's it's definitely unique, but um, it's it's an interesting sort of difference, you know, because. The majority of our industry is 99% women. Oh, so it's mostly women, right? It is. Women. It is. And um, I absolutely am just fascinated with our industry. I love it. Like, I love that aspect of it. Yeah. You tell me to go into, like, engineering, which is probably the flip side, 99%, you know, yeah. male. I, yeah. I, there's no way I could do yeah. it. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm so – I love – working in this business. I love working with women. Um, and it's beauty is just such an interesting art in itself. Yeah, yeah. And even though nails are so small, it's really uh, just that process of, um, of understanding trends in color and looks. I absolutely love it. Absolutely wow, love I, it. I, love, and I can tell you love, you love yeah. it. Now, I, cause I work in an industry also, one of the, thing, one of the many things I do, I'm a professional organizer. And again, it's mostly women. Yes. And I love it. I mean, to me, and that actually helps us because we stand out it's even more, so right? It's so true. It's so true. For marketing and everything, right? Yes. I just had a conversation with this, uh, this amazing guy in Florida. We were at a show, and he was basically like, look, how do I approach this? I'm, I'm a guy. And I'm like, you have no idea how much of an advantage right. you actually have. So <laughs> totally relate to what you're saying. Yeah. It's like, actually use that to you, right? Because you, you don't blend into the ocean of That's right. other women. That's right. You're a guy. That's right. So you actually work at your advantage. Huge advantage. But now, but now, are there any drawbacks, in your opinion, at all being a guy in the business? Probably the one is if I'm out and about and I see, like, an amazing pair of, like, you know, acrylic stiletto <laughs> glitter fade <laughs> nail art, and I actually comment, Yeah. the look I get is... You're a creep, man. Why are you ah, commenting on funny. like I'll you know if I if I see somebody's nail beds too, like I'm super yeah. sensitive to that, yeah. and I say, "Wow, you have beautiful nail beds." The look I get is like, "What are you saying to me?" I don't like that part. I want. I wish I could just. Um, I always have to back it up with, "Oh, I, I I'm in the nail business. Yeah. Like I'm in the cosmetic business." Yeah. That's the only one. Outside of that, honestly, I love every part of it. Now I've gotten manicures before. Uh -huh. you know, not, not men get manicures. Absolutely, it's fine. So I want to ask you a question. Should men get clear nail polish on their, on their nails? Uh, you know what? I go through my own phases. Okay. I wear color. Oh, and okay. sometimes I wear one, sometimes two, sometimes one hand. Sometimes I'll, I'll mix yeah. it up. I personally don't think um, – I mean, that's like – that's probably the majority of what men do is they get clear manicures. Yeah. But I really – 
I like the idea of men wearing color. I do. Well, I see, um, it, I see it in rock stars. I see yeah. it in certain things like that. But I mean, a regular everyday guy. I know. It's very rare you don't see it. And I, I have to admit, would I, if I wasn't involved in the business, okay. maybe not. Right. But um, I love it. And this is why I love it. Because even for me as a guy, like there's a certain like connection with color that I found being in the business where – I'll explore with different colors on my hands. And there is an emotion that is, it's real, depending on what color I pick, right? So my clothes, I'm, this is what I wear. I'm not kidding you, James, every day. Okay. This okay. is what I wear. Okay. I'm the most boring person <laughs> when it comes to wearing like clothes. Yeah. And this is why for me, like maybe putting a little bit of color and expressiveness on my fingernails I like it and I do it and I come home my kids both my kids are like dad what are you doing I'm like I like it yeah. I enjoy it and so my son yeah. he goes and he puts color okay. on it and I'm like there you go man I love it Funny. how yeah. old are your kids uh, nine and six young. yeah they're, young. they're little babies they're babies they're little babies <laughs> all right so now okay so let's go back a bit so your mother yeah young young fellow that's right um, had you and your brother Gregory. So now, how did you get your name? Yeah, that's a great I'm like, question. I'm like, who are you? How did you get that name? Habib. So we are, I'm half Palestinian, half Korean. Oh, yeah. So, okay. like, talk about an insane See, the Korean mix. part, I thought, I was like, I'm like, what's the other side? Yeah, yeah. My dad, a Palestinian. So when my brother was born, the story goes like this. My brother was born... My mom named him after Gregory Peck, the actor. Oh, okay. You know, pretty cool. Yeah. And <laughs> and then, so like two months before I was born, my grandfather, he had passed away. And my uh, grandmother steps in. And like in Middle Eastern culture, it's like, if it's a boy, he's getting his name. And my mom was like, okay, I guess this is what we're doing. So I was born. And uh, immediately my grandmother was like, you're taking your grandfather's name, which is Habib. So... Growing up, I hated it. I'm sure. But I tell you, like, it pays dividends. Like, when I go anywhere in any Middle Eastern, like, even traveling and, and uh, when they hear my name, it's like it's like that instant connection yeah. and yeah. conversation. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so I got that little, like, advantage yeah. on that yeah. side anytime uh, my name gets brought up, which is cool. In the Korean. I know. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Wow. O- only in Los Angeles. Yeah, only, yeah, only in Los Angeles. You're right. You're right. <laughs> only in Los Angeles. We're like a melting pot. Like, seriously, melting For sure. pot here. But it's great. So your mom decided to start a business. Yeah. I think you said 49. Yeah. She was 49 years old. She, I was out of the house. My brother was out of the house. Actually, excuse me. My brother was not out of the house. He was kind of back and forth, okay. but I was gone. And she, her story, what she says is this. I was bored. And my mom has, like, entrepreneurial DNA. Like, oh, okay. she is just like, I, I got to do something. Okay. She can't just sit around. So she bought a, like, post office, et cetera, which is now, like, a UPS store. Yes, they are now, yeah. yeah. And a gentleman walked in and said, I want to rent the back part of your business. I, I create kits for cosmetology schools. Okay. My mom literally on the spot, James, just said, I want to partner with you. I think it's a great idea. I want in. And so my mom, my mom's gangster, man. Go on, girl. She, she, <laughs> she literally, uh, my, my dad, mechanic, you know, turned wrenches his whole life, hardworking man, um, had the house basically paid off. My mom oh, okay. refinanced, okay. refinanced the, the house. Okay. He didn't even know. At that time, there's things that you could maybe do you can't do today. I wouldn't recommend this for okay, anybody. Okay, do not do this. Not recommended. She, re, she refined. Disclaimer, 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 disclaimer. Big time, yes. big time. But this is the, the, this is the truth of how we got started. Um, that's how she invested in the business. You know, She basically took, took the money out of the line of credit on the house, and she was in the beauty business. And um, it was uh, straight downhill for many years. Which happens in business. When, that is, um, in my opinion, I was just talking to these lovely women yes, outside. Yes, you are, yes. This, I was just telling them, this is part of business. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't avoid ups and downs, oh, no. right? I make money until the first, I think the second year I broke even. Right. I didn't, make, I didn't make a profit, I broke, broke even. Broke even. And, like, literally almost to the penny, and I started crying. Like, I broke yeah. even. Oh, my goodness. Huge. Right. Like, so, so similar to, to what happened to you. It took us eight years. To, to get to zero. And I remember, um, I remember telling my mother, my, my brother, when we got out of debt, I was like, we're, excuse me, eight years was digging ourselves in a hole. Then the next five years 
was us digging ourselves out to Got get it. to zero. Yeah, so it was 13 years wow. before we hit zero, and it was a huge moment for us. I remember yeah. us, like, literally, we were crying in tears. Yeah. Like, I, I, we I were back to zero. Mm -hmm. um, but it's ups and downs. Um, that's that's the nature of it, and it was really hard. The fir those first eight years was extremely tough, and I um, I jumped in uh, in 2000. So and you left pre-med. I left pre-med, got into music. I was like, I went to my parents and I said, I just graduated college. I said, I'm going to be a drummer. And they're oh, like, okay. you're going to, what? Okay. And God bless my parents. They were like, go do what you got to do. You know, they were totally. For a Palestinian Korean to say it to you. Can you parents, believe it? That's, that's really good. That's huge. Yes, that's huge. Yes. And they, they were very, very open. They said, go, go experience. And that. I always say that for me, that those like six, seven years of on my own and trying to figure out and trying to make it in the music business yeah. was training in school for me, decision-making, um, you know, taking action, all these things led up to my ability to eventually like, you know, build, help build a business. Yeah. So, um, came when on board. came on board and, um, it was insane. We were <laughs> in mass amounts of debt yeah. and my brother and my mom, their credit was shot. I yeah. was the only one with good credit left. Yeah. So um, I remember going to the bank and unloading my credit cards, about 60K. Wow. And like at like 20, 21 or 22% interest. Oh. And I was like, I'm officially in business. Yeah. Like, right. here we go. Right. I'm in. And from that point, from that moment, I was walking out of the bank. I honestly remember thinking and feeling, that's it. There is no option now. We have to we got to make it. We have to succeed. We have to get out of this because I'm that last, I was that last line of defense, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, um, man, we, we, we grinded hard. James. What do you tell people, Javi, uh, who are, who are going through building their business? What yeah. do you tell them? How do you tell them to stay in it and not just give them, say, screw it, give up? Yeah. It's really hard. Um, that's it's, the truth, everybody. Just, that, just, that's the hard truth. Like it's hard. It is straight up insanely yes. difficult to build a business. Yeah. What, what I always tell people is, number one, you're not alone. Like, yeah. this is part of the game. Yeah. Like, period. If you want to – if you're going to say, I'm an entrepreneur, you want to get in the business, you have to understand you're, you're about to go through some very difficult times. Yes. Do you have the stomach for it? Yes. Some people aren't cut out to, to be an entrepreneur. You know, to – That's, to, true. That's it's, true. It's just it's, – it's very difficult. Yeah, it is. But um, hang in there. It's For me, it's a combination of – being patient and also being very objective. One of the things I find that people lack is this, is like an awareness of actually what's happening in their business. So what they do is when things go wrong, what they'll do is they'll justify it or blame the world like, hey, this is not me. Instead of taking an, a real objective look at your business and saying, what am I doing here? What is actually going on? And then you have a chance of fixing it. And then you have a chance of like really kind of succeeding. Okay, so okay. It's, kind of, it's that it's that perspective on your business of like, don't sugarcoat, like take the hits, but don't let that opportunity pass of like, if, if you're going to take three steps back, don't don't just sweep it under the rug and chalk it up as like, oh, it was bad luck. Learn, like really look at it and learn from it. You know, I know that for some people, the hardest thing is to look at yourself. So hard. It's and hard. It's, and when you say it out loud, then you're like, oh, my God, then it becomes real. It becomes real. That's so true. Right. That is, it's so true, James. But you have 100%. to do that, right? You have to do that. You do. You do. Your it, money, everything's on the line. Everything is – and that's the thing with being an entrepreneur. You're putting it all in the middle. Mm -hmm. And um, you got to look at what is really going on. I think that is such a – Good advice. Huge piece that people – I'll talk to, you know – people that are getting into business and I'll ask them some questions and I can see there's a level of denial that's happening. And I'm like, God, don't, don't do that. Yeah. Take the hits. Like it's, everybody goes through that part. You can take the hits, but what you can't do is don't brush it under the rug. Like say, take responsibility. You know what? I made a bad decision. I was like, we, I've made so many bad decisions yeah, no, I've made some in our business. Ours, yeah. Oh my God! Right. Like I've made, I've literally flushed so much money down the train, the drain by making bad decisions in in our business, you know, path. But the one thing I don't do is like let that opportunity go. It's yeah. like, okay, what did I do? Got it. Check. Got Not it. doing that again. Yeah. I see. I'm gonna I'm gonna try something else. 
I always tell people, there's no such thing as failure. That's, that's a word I take out of my vocabulary. There's no failure. There's just things that happen. That's right. That work and some that don't. That's it. But in the end, if you're paying attention, they're all teaching you something. One, I, I can't, I wish I could put like a thousand exclamation yeah. points behind that. Yeah. If, if you really understand that, what you just said, people would be able to stay in business longer. And they would actually, when they do hit those lows, they would, they would say like, got it. This is part of it. Um, I need to learn something, you know, versus like, like push it off and not want to deal. Right. Or don't beat yourself up so heavily. That's right. Um, forgive yourself. That's Give right. compassion to yourself that being an entrepreneur is just not an easy thing to do. And I said, there's always, there's always ebbs and flows. Constantly. It's just, it's just, that's just, that's just, and I feel like it's freeing. What, if you know yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> you can kind of go, okay, I mean, and let's say it was less than the blows. But what it does is it at least gives you permission to go, okay, that one decision didn't work out. I tried this one thing. I tried this, this sale item. Or I tried this. And it didn't work out. Now I know better. I'll try this and see if that works. You know, you know, in like from when we got out of debt and then when we actually started growing our business, right? So from when I, when I joined the business, the next five years was us like really slugging it out. We got to zero, okay? Then our business started to grow and we were on this like insane growth path for like 10 years, right? And then it stopped. And then we started to decline. Oh, you hate seeing that. Yeah, oh so, and, and here, here I am after being in business for this long, thinking to myself, I could easily um, basically sweep this under the rug. So here's what I did. I started trying everything. I, I hired multiple marketing firms, tried it, didn't work. I hired multiple consultants, tried it, didn't work. I tried, I tried in the last seven years, I must have hired, I don't know how many consultants and marketing wow. firms, James, none of it worked out. Literally probably I don't even know how much money we spent. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars of investment. Now, here's the thing. People go, dude, do you, do you, does that bother you that you flushed all that money down the toilet? And I, I, I tell them, I say, no, because what it eventually did was it got me to the point where I said, okay, what's left? What options do I have? What can I do? I've tried A, B, C, and D. Let me try E. And I tried E, which is on that digital marketing space, like real commitment to it. And all of a sudden now, the last three years, our business is like on this explosive growth. Yeah. I had to go through that, yeah. you know? And I could have easily like thrown the towel in and said, this is not working. You know, I'm, I can't make decisions. I suck. Right. And instead it was like, I'll, I'll find it. I'll find yeah. it. I just need a little bit of time, you know? Yeah. And um, we have found it now. Now we're on this, like, it's crazy right now what's going on. Hey. And we're going to take a break, and we're going to talk about actual Young Nails, Inc. and the community that he's created, and what did, what do they do exactly? <laughs> we're going to find out more about that here on Extra Connections with James Law Jr. and Habib Salo here on the After Party Radio. Oh, my God. Oh my God, like totally. 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 Oh my God, like totally.
Oh my God, like totally. Yes, that is actually <laughs> my second song I ever did in my entire life with a group called Chog. You can find it on all social media platforms and all places I sell music. But it's called Oh My God, Like Totally. I used to sing that to my little niece who's three years old. She made it to a song. I made some money. <laughs> Hi, I'm James Live Jr. Extra Connections here on That Party Radio. I'm here with Sabim Salo of uh, Young Nails, Inc. Okay, so what is, as I said, Young Nails, Inc. is a nail care. Yep. Whatever. What do you guys do? So we manufacture professional nail care products. Okay is like that's the nuts and bolts of what we do so if you're a pro nail artist licensed um we make products for you so you have a clientele you need nail products uh anything for your salon business we manufacture so acrylics gels nail polish gel polish nail files all that stuff um but what what i say what we really do is teach nail pros how to make money you okay, know? and we do that through our content, and we do that through our education, um, and that's what we're really passionate about is like connecting with people and really showing them how to build their businesses. Connecting, absolutely, yes. huge, yeah. huge. Um, but but we're a nail manufacturing company. So now, how? I mean, okay. So you have, so I see these two components. You have kind of education, yep, pro- actual actual product, right? How is your product side doing? Uh, the product side is ultimately. That has to. That's like that's it, right? Okay. Like, because those. That's what we sell. That's how we generate revenue okay. for the company. So that side is doing phenomenal. But oddly enough, it's not. It's not like. It's not the focus. We need it to survive as a business and grow. But what our focus is is let's teach, inspire, and actually show through our content, which is all free, okay. free content go, and education, folks. free, absolutely. And then with the hope that they'll connect with us and um, go back and purchase our products. And that type of strategy, we've always had it in us. Um, it works. It really works. What kind, are there a lot of nail conferences or gatherings in yeah. the country? There's, um, so that's really interesting. Like the, the, the nail trade show market has okay. really changed. Okay. I actually... We did a whole podcast on this recently of like why trade shows ultimately today they're just not they're not great oh, okay. and mm-hmm. like it's it's changed like the the industry is not like so much focused on the nail professional the beauty professional they're more focused on like how much can they charge the vendors at the show uh, okay. and so we've actually removed ourselves from like ninety percent of the the nail conferences oh wow okay. um, we do the key ones okay but there are other things starting to pop up more digital focused more social media focused yeah. which we want to get really involved on that side of and it. you have a young nails community on Facebook which we I do. join and they're always talking people are yeah. really involved which I love engagement folks huge Engage- you can have like twenty thousand followers, but only two people talk. Right, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But you have you have engagement on your page. Um, so you started that for people to kind of get together, nail yeah you know, to get together. Absolutely. So like our so we have an actual wine community on Facebook, mm-hmm. and this has been we just started it like a month, maybe three weeks ago. I oh, think about a month ago. I, mean, see, I thought it was more than that. Yeah, you have a lot of followers on there. Yeah, it's a great community yeah. so our facebook page we've had for like yeah, right. for, since facebook started the community just started and it's so the engagement on there is insane like i love it because people ask questions about nails and then they can go and get answers from other professional nail mm-hmm. artists and then we go on there and give like you know custom like content right. and um but it's right now it is it's my obsession okay. is the community i love it just because of that engagement what you're talking about it's very I rich it. yeah i love it. i love when you have groups of people actually talk to each other and do things and it's share everything. ideas i feel like you know i always say that we're the village right i come from a village mentality where everybody helps each other yep yep i totally agree with that and what's funny is a lot of nail professionals in the industry they're actually scared to share information because they feel like somebody else is going to like Oh, if I show her how to do this or give that advice, they're going to take business away from me. And it's just not true. Right. It's not true. It's like share, help right. each other. Right. There's enough business for everybody. I was going to say, there probably is enough business to go around. Yeah. There's a lot of people with yes. lots of hands. A lot of hands. A lot of hands out there. That's a lot of, right. A lot of hands out there. Um, 
just kind of a fun thing. Sure. So what are some of the nail trends happening right now? Yeah. You've noticed? So right now it's spring into summer, right? Okay. Uh, we just hit summer. So as you can imagine, the the brighter colors oh, yes. are really popping. Yes. Um, but we're seeing a, what's really cool and happening right now on nails is you're getting um, uh, nail art has sort of transitioned into this like you'll have – Three nails that have one look okay. and two nails that have a completely different look. Oh. But all in all, it's telling like a story. Sorry. Exactly. So you're getting themes instead uh, of like straight, all black or like, you know, pink and whites like how it used to be. Nail art has really transitioned into like telling a story and themes now. Wow. So it's really interesting, man. I yeah. love it. Like you can get very creative with, you know, maybe you have – four nails that are one solid co color and then like your accent is like this beautiful nail art just on one oh, so wow. if you're more conservative you can still have some pop in yeah, yeah. you yeah. know and yeah. ex express yourself in a way yeah. and then there's the other extreme of what i was talking about two nails will have this two nails will have this but the colors match and it still tells a story wow, yeah so crazy an actress i know on days of our lives um, she was talking about. I noticed. I noticed when she was talking on the show, her, her nails hands. were getting lots of attention. And she goes, "Yeah, they kind of one day they kind of shaped them into claws. One day for the character. Oh yeah, like they were really pointy. And it was uh -huh. like kind of you see them. She was like talking. I'm like, oh, it's always your nails. And we're yeah, laughing, we're laughing about that. That's uh, the stilettos. Yeah. So those those pointy. Those are fierce. <laughs> those are fierce. Like <laughs> a, a, a woman in stilettos, whether it's her heels or her hands. Yeah. You get out of the way. Get out of the way. That's like right. means she means business, and That's I so I funny. love that energy uh, when a woman wears stilettos, like she's about to like you, you need to you need to watch yourself. Yeah. You know I I just it it changes What's sexy, a woman. It's powerful. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I love that how it um it makes them you know feel and it's real something that small could transform well you know it's right now that, now I'm talking to you about it I have to think about <laughs> over and over again there were times when I had guests on my show. Um, and I saw, the, and they're, they're sitting across me, and I see them, I'm like, oh, I have said, yeah. those are really pretty nails. Or like, that's really pretty. Right. Like, they have caught my attention. You're right, this little tiny piece of your so body. So small, right? And I was like, and I have, and I have, my eye had going, oh, what's that? Exactly. Caught my attention. I wonder if Miss Brittany wears nails. Does she wear nails or anything? No? No? She doesn't wear anything. She doesn't wear nails. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get you set up. We're going to get you all set up. We're going to get you all set up. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. nails. <laughs> but my mom's in her nails. We're going to get down to her nails. Um, okay, so now, what's another... What's another trend? Like, is, are mm. are acrylics more popular than? Great question. Great question. So, it changes. It fluctuates okay. a lot. So, right now, acrylics are like hot. Okay. Um, it's it's gone like gel. Probably three four years ago, like gel was everywhere. I keep like, hearing that all the time. Gel. Yeah. I like, yeah. I, mean, I keep like, I keep hearing yeah. about that. Gel's huge. Uh, it, this is crazy. So we hold classes at our facility. And the ones yeah. that fill up every month, acrylic, acrylic. Really? Acrylic. Gel right now is like trying to make its way, but it's just it's it's part of the um, the ebb and flow. Yeah. You know, right now it's acrylic, but in we actually predict very soon gel is going to come right back yeah. because with gel, there's no there's no odor. It's totally oh, okay. it's totally okay. odorless. Okay. But it's relatively new in the nail like business. Like acrylic's been around forever. Yeah. With acrylics, there's odor. So uh, you can't get to that odorless doing acrylics. Odorless products just don't really work that well. So um, we really see gel like coming back okay. very, very soon. But right now it's acrylics. Very interesting. What is one of your biggest sellers? Our biggest seller is a, well, it's a little tiny product in this little tiny bottle. I love it. It's called Protein Bond. It's a bonder. And you can use it before any enhancement or even nail polish, gel polish. It's the first thing you do. You prep the nails and you apply this product. Nothing's coming off. Like oh, wow. the product sticks. It's our number one bestseller. I mean, we go through, it's it's our proprietary formula. Um, it's very unique and it, it just works. Wow. So you typically, no matter what, there's a lot of different nail pros out there that use different systems, yeah. you know, awesome. Majority of nail professionals, one thing they have in common is they they pretty much all use Protein Bond. It's a, it's a phenomenal product, really good. Invented wow. by my brother. So okay, so Gregory, what, so his what is his job there? Greg, so he's president of Young Nails. Okay. What Greg does, he is very heavy on the education side. Okay. 
very heavy and on the product development okay. side. Okay, so yeah. like you want him, he is like in, in endless, uh, wow. uh, like just churning out ideas for product wow. development. And what's cool though is like, you know, he used to do that solo. Now we've got um, another person in there. She's our general manager. Her name is Tracy Ryerson. She also does tons of education. She actually runs the business now, but um, also participates in a lot of the product development. Wow. So okay. those two together, forget it. Like yeah. we have products like for like the next two years to launch. Wow. It's really cool. It. That's great. Super cool. So you guys, we're we'll gonna our last break for the evening. This is Extra Connections here. We're talking to Habib Salo. We're gonna be back here on After Party Radio. Stay there. Somebody, somebody supreme. I am somebody. somebody. I, I come from a king. I am somebody. I, I come from a king. I am somebody. somebody. Yeah, I am supreme. I am somebody. Somebody supreme. I am somebody. somebody. I, I come from a king. I am somebody. I, I come from a queen. I am somebody. somebody. Yeah, I am supreme. Somebody, somebody supreme. I am somebody. I, I, I come from a king. I am somebody. I, I come from a queen. I am somebody. I, I am supreme. I am somebody. Somebody supreme. I am somebody. I, I, I come from a king. I am somebody. I, I come from a queen. I am somebody. I, I am supreme. You are. 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 You are somebody, you are someone supreme. You are somebody, someone so keen. You are somebody, someone so keen. You are somebody, you are supreme. We are all supreme. We are all supreme. We are all supreme. I am somebody, someone supreme. You are somebody, supreme. I am somebody, somebody supreme. I am somebody, I, I, I come from a king. I am somebody, I, I come from a queen. I am somebody, I, I am supreme. I am somebody, somebody supreme. I am somebody, I, I, I come from a king. I am somebody, I, I come from a queen. I am somebody, I, I am supreme. That was Supreme Beings off my first album, Songs from My Inside Voice. You can get that anywhere you can find music, Spotify, uh, well, blank for it. Amazon Music, uh, iTunes, Google Play, you know, Pandora, it's everywhere. I'm James I. Jr. Extra Connections. I'm with Habib Salo here on After Party Radio. So as we kind of wrap up this yes. segment, what is some more advice you can give to nail business owners should they, should people go yeah. into nail business first of all is it is this a profitable thing i mean yeah. we with all the other sides of it sure. but should they still continue doing it yeah great uh, honestly it's a great question the nail business as a nail pro yeah. is a phenomenal career you can make you can have an incredible uh like career and you can set your own schedule so yeah. i was also i was talking to those those ladies outside yeah. i was that was one of one of the things that we were discussing was we have a lot of like nail pros we work with that are very close to our company. They built successful clienteles. They work three days a week. Oh, okay. In the in those three days, they're working a lot, ten yeah, to twelve of hours course, a day. Of course, of course. But they set their own schedule and they're 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 making money. They have great careers. You can we have some that are making six figures. You know, I mean they are working hard. Um, but you can really have a phenomenal career in the nail industry. I would highly recommend it. If you're passionate about nails, um, you should really look into it as a career. You should get 
sort of what was it certified? I guess. I mean, what you should. What's the what's so the thing? so also you got to get licensed, license, which means in your state, there's only I think there's one or two states where you don't need a license. Oh, okay. Somewhere back, I think one of them is Connecticut, if I'm not oh, mistaken. Wow. Okay. But everywhere else, you got to have a license, which means you got to go to beauty school. Um, you got to get. Uh, it's, it depends on what state you're in. It varies. You have to check the laws, but um, it's different hours. Oh, okay. Usually, it's. Anywhere from two to, let's say, five months. Okay. Um, not long. Not very long. And then you're out and you can start charging for, for nails. So the thing is, you can do nails, oh, oh, but no. to charge them for a business, yeah. you, you need a license. Okay, so you need a license. Yes. Okay. Now, are licenses, do you have to keep them up? Or once you get it, do you have it? You do. You do have to keep them up. So I think it's every three to four years. Okay. So you got to renew it. Yeah, exactly. You got to pay a fee. You got to send the state you know, that money yeah. and have it renewed. Um, and you're good. And you're good. Not bad. I, and I love that it's a it's a profession that you don't have to be in school for like five years. That's to right. Learn. I mean, it's like you said, four or five months, you get you get a, a new skill, and then you can actually open your business. I'm a huge fan of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. I I went to school like a lot, and then I, I went, you know went to college, <laughs> yes. got a degree. I was in a master's program. I dropped out of it. Here's the thing. All of that. I'm not using any of it. No. You know what I you know you know what was my my real education was was like figuring out how to have a career in music on my own experience. And that's why I love the nail profession. It's like yeah. here's 3 months, get your license, but um then you go out and and you got to figure out how to have a, have a career. Yeah. It's it's a real skill that you can make money. You know, and I'm not I'm not slamming education like no, of course, you know, no, of course not, no, of course not. Never, right. I I think it's it's great, right. but for the majority of things that you want to do in life, like experience is like the huge thing. That's why I love this. Yeah. Three to five months, and then go out, and you got to figure yeah. it out. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of that. Yeah, and I think, and, and trust me, I see so many nail places everywhere. Yeah, everywhere, and they're all busy. <clears throat> everywhere. All busy. They're all busy. Yeah. Like, seriously, they're like they're like restaurants. Like it's like most restaurants. <laughs> like they're all busy. And like, and I, I find it fascinating because I'll see rows of chairs or yeah. rows of tables, and they're all packed. Packed. It is a the thing. The thing with nails is that hair is different because hair can cost a lot uh, of money, yes. right? Yes. Nails, you can get in. You know, like forty to like seventy, eighty. Depends on where you go, you know, and who you go to and what you want in a look. But you're not dropping three, four hundred dollars oh, like right. you are hair or yeah, skin. That's true. Um, it's 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 an affordable, like real like pleasure. You know, you go in, I'm gonna get my nails done, I'm gonna relax for forty five minutes yeah. or thirty minutes, whatever it is, and you can chill out and actually enjoy yeah. the service. So, um, that's why it's uh that's why times of um when the economy starts to kind of dip nail business starts to boom because it's that oh. little guilty pleasure yes. that you can go in and do. I feel like nails, well, even like barbershops, you know, they, they just kind of never, they kind of are almost economy proof on some level yeah. because those are those small luxuries. It's true. I always say, as long as I have 20 bucks in my pocket, my head's getting shaved. You're going to get a cut, right? Get a cut. That's right. I don't care. As long as I have $20, <laughs> I'm going to do it. And I, I'm going to make sure it's cut. And it, but it's funny, now, nails you do lean times too. I never cut my own hair. So I don't do that. But it's, like, but it's kind of a fun pampering because also nails yeah. look at as pampering. So how do we tell people that nails are not just a luxury item, that they can be something that's just or elective thing. That yeah. It's something that is, can be useful and necessary. Here, if you find the right nail professional, you're not only going to get like a good manicure or pedicure or acrylic nails. It's a little bit of a therapy session yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to go, you're going to sit down, you're going to talk. And that's the one thing we tell nail pros too. You're, you're, you're a full-time, uh, you know, nail pro. You're a part-time therapist. Yeah. It comes with the territory. Um, and a lot of, like, w when women go in, they, it's, it's their time to just chill. And maybe they're going to vent a little bit. But it's that communication. You're in the service yeah. business. You're going to yeah. communicate with the person on the other side. Um, and that's the part, you know. But you got to find – that's why finding the right nail professional is so important. It's, uh, like, took me, like – to find the right, I go to therapy. I've been going to therapy for like 20 years. <laughs> therapy's I need good. It. Therapy's good. Therapy's good. I go to therapy too. Therapy's I need good. it. I'll tell you. Yes. <laughs> but it, it, to find the right connection, you got to find the right one. Yeah. And with nails, um, you want to feel comfortable in the chair. Yeah. And the majority of that is that communication. Yeah. It's that bond that, that you have with a nail pro. I hate feet. 
I don't know how my friends and family know that. <laughs> but I have to mention briefly, I, I say it towards the end, like, I don't want to talk about that long, but I was like, your thoughts on pedicures. Oh, my God. Pedicures are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to say They're that. They're amazing. No, I'm telling you, I've, like, I haven't gone in a bunch of times. But when I've gone in to get a pedicure, like we go into these salons, they're like, yeah. you get a free pedicure. Come inside. Oh, okay. oh my God. Have you not gone to pedicure? No. Oh, my God. Your life oh, will be changed. My feet. Don't touch my feet. They f- it is the most relaxing. Yeah. You put them in this hot water, and you soak, <laughs> and you just chill. I'm telling you, James, it is yeah. a magnificent experience. Right. I love it. Love and pedicures. And folks nail polish on their toes. Oh, yeah. Your absolutely. Does. They all do. Toes are, it's like... But the nails are so small on your they, toes. They are, but like right. it's the full look like of a woman, right? Like when she comes in and she, she got her dress, she got her look, she got her hair, nails, feet, and she wearing those Open shoes. Toe, shoes yeah, yeah, you got to have, it's everything's got to be like just yeah, pristine. Yeah. And nails and, and toes, it's that finishing, you know, part of the look. Like... You can you can have everything dialed in your hair your dress but if your if your nails and toes aren't like finished properly it's just not right you gotta have it finished it completes the look it really does I believe you I just, I just can't do feet you gotta do it for me oh, one time oh my god <laughs> what's on the way so do you guys do you guys actually have a nail place as part of your thing or do you just use more of the center and the business correct we are we don't have a place but we're actually looking to have like a satellite location that in the next couple of years somewhere in LA we'll we want to do that actually well how's it been out for you in Anaheim is it been a great location great for you guys to be out there it's it's great I, I live out in LA I would prefer oh, to funny. be in LA oh. I know I know so I have an insane commute every that's day that's what you like I come to your show because we're in yeah. LA we're in England so it's mine. literally like right on the way so it was like like, it was like perfect. Funny. Oh, that's so funny. No, no, no. It's and honestly, regardless, I would still, I would yeah, still I, make I, it out. I know. I know. But, um, but Anaheim's great. It's kind of central uh, to like my family. My brother lives further out east. I live out west. My mom is right, you know, okay. kind of smack next to okay. Anaheim. So it works for all of us. But are it, you, it's are, great. I guess you're Disneyland. We are like ten minutes from Disneyland. My favorite yeah. place, folks, is Jim Boy's Tacos. <laughs> the cross from, from I'm just like you on the show. Mm. The cross from Disneyland. Really. I gotta try it. Jim Boy's Tacos is the bomb. It's from I'm Northern in. California. Love it. I knew the family who actually started like 40 years ago. Nice. Um, and they've expanded, so now they, they brought locations down to only Orange County. I love There's it. There's none in LA proper. That's yeah. That's not right. But I'm happy the fact that they're in Anaheim. I'm gonna go. I yes, gotta check them out. Check I'm always out. looking for good tacos, man. Oh, they're good. You'll, you'll love them. They have a good um, carnitas taco and Oof. a carne asada taco. It's oh my god. Really good. Sounds it's, really I, good. I think there's crack seasoning on the tacos <laughs> on the taco shells. Because I can eat like five of them in one sitting, and I yeah. should be eating five of them. Just inhale. Just inhale it. They're so, they're so good. I love it. Um, what keeps you going yeah. with your family, your business, and everything? What, what keeps you – what keeps hopping? How do you – actually, here's a better question. What do you do outside the business to yeah. keep you going? Honestly, it's it's a great question. Yeah. It's for me, I've simplified my life okay, completely. Okay. It's I love what I do. So therefore, I I want to spend as much time doing it as humanly possible because I genuinely love what I do. I love the building of our business. It yeah. is I have fun, it's a challenge, it's a puzzle. Um my family, I love their number one priority in my life. So, when I'm not working, it is all family. I literally don't hang out with my friends. I literally, I talk to them on social. We keep in touch. But I got, like, I got to keep my priorities straight. My life is not, I don't want to complicate my life. It's simple. I want to keep doing what I love every day as much as I can. And then I, like, I want to spend time with my family and my kids. I want to spend. How do you do that? You have, you, have a, you have a wife, you have yeah, kids, you have yeah, small kids. How do yeah. you like – So it's like literally here's my, my schedule. I get up. I make breakfast for the kids. Oh, okay. I make their lunches. Oh, okay. And then um, – so I always say – my my wife does seventy percent. I do thirty. Like yeah. she she does she does shout the hard out to her. work. Yeah, <laughs> huge shout out to her. Yeah. She's she's amazing. Yeah. And I go to work. I usually do a twelve hour day. I get home around like seven thirty, maybe eight. Oh, okay. And then um, I'm with the kids for like forty five minutes to an hour. I'm they with them. Bed, they go to bed. And then and then I'm back to work until maybe midnight. Um, and then on the weekends, it's all family. Period. Oh, all okay. family. Yeah, it's like hundred percent family. It's with either um, 
with my wife every Wednesday night. We do a date night every very Wednesday. Good, very good. That, that is scheduled in. And then good. on the weekends, it is literally kids and family, man. It's That is – my life is simple today. And it's okay to schedule stuff in. Absolutely it is. No, it is. 100%. It is. It's okay to schedule it. It's not, it's not less we romantic. Have to. You have to schedule it in. I'm, it, th- we've been married coming on 13 years. Oh, you, you got to schedule the weekly yeah. date night. Yeah. You have to have it. It's it's important. So weekend. So how, I mean, so so is, was it hard for you to to, to take off? Of like, I mean, you're, are you completely off of work completely? No. Or mostly. 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 That right. it's a gr- another great question. It's mostly. Um, and but when I'm like when I'm relaxing, I really shut it off. Okay. And then like right. when the kids are in bed. I might, you know, from like 10 to midnight, I might go in there. But I also like, I like my Netflix, man. Like, I have to just shut it off and like just zone out on some just. What are you watching right now on Netflix? Anything anything you got that you like right now? Oh, my God. There's a lot of stuff on Netflix right now. I Actually, I'm on Hulu right now, Handmaid's Tale. Are you watching that? Oh, my God. (laughs) The show's killing me. I haven't watched it yet. Okay. Oh, my God. It's insanity. It's madness. I'm completely hooked on the show right now. So that's my downtime. That's your downtime. Super simple. I bring it up because I always tell people all work and no play. Yeah. And even your passion, if that's all you do, right. can You're burn right. you out. You're 100% right. Of your passion. You're right. Then you start hating it after a yeah. while. It's very true, yeah. actually. So it's good to kind of like take a little step yeah. out. Yes. And and that's where, like, with my family, like, I love, like, family's tough. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Right. Like, it's not all, like, ooh, yeah. awesome. Unicorns and rainbows. Oh, my God. No. It's hard. <laughs> like, kids are hard. Oh, yes, they are. Right? It's yes. difficult. But I, I love hanging out with my with my daughter, my son, and obviously my wife. We have a good time. But my, like, I don't like to go to bars or hang out or go to, par- like, parties. And I'm not into that. It, when I'm, what I enjoy is, like, sitting and just, like, watching a good show with my wife. Yeah. Like, we'll watch yeah. shows. And that, like, I, we connect that way. Yes. I love it. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good one. But I just I think it's very important. Cause Gotta I know, have it. Well, I always know that, you know, I don't, think I don't think there's a definition of really true balance. There's just moments where you, you can balance yeah. things. Yeah. I, I agree. Right. It's, I, I'm such a person of, like, extremes of, like, oh. work and then extreme, like, family and chill. Oh, so okay. I, I agree with you 100%. But, but you got to have it or else you will burn yeah, out of your passion. You'll burn out. And, that's, and for me, I try to, when I go see my, my kids and stuff in Sacramento, in Sacramento, um, they don't care. Papa Jamie is just Papa Jamie. They don't. They don't care what I do on TV. They don't really. Sure. They know what I do. But they don't. They're, they're teenagers. They don't know what I do. Um, but they. But it's like they really want to see me. It actually brings me back down to earth. Yeah. When I'm with the kids, right. the grandkids, and everybody, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm down to earth. I'm just. I'm just Papa Jamie or Daddy to them. They don't. They don't care about the. You met so and so last night. And right. The kid right. From growing pains. Like they don't care about that. They don't care about that stuff. Right. Right. And it actually gives me perspective, so I don't right. get too big in my britches about sure. what I'm doing. Totally. I think, it's, I think it's such a, it's such a, a great thing. Um, and then kind of one of the last things to people out there yep. who are watching this and going, well, I heard what he said. It's really hard. you got to find balance. That's okay. What are some last things you want to say to people out there about this, this whole nail business that you love so much? <sighs> what, would like, what would you like them to know? What would you like them to know? If you, if you have a real, like, genuine curiosity about nails, you know, or hair or skin in the beauty okay. business – it is a fascinating industry to um, to explore. Like, at the minimum, I would say if you have a curiosity, just like try it. Like, you have to try it. Go get your license. Go to beauty school. Step in. Give it a shot. You know, you, Why not? you like exploration for me. I would tell anybody the same advice. Like anything that you're curious about. You have to, but I meet so many women that are like, I love nails. I want to do it just like, again, the, yeah. the, the three amazing women I met outside. They're like, we want to go to beauty school. I'm like, go. That's what I was telling them. You're curious about it. You've been thinking about it. You love nails. Stop. Just go and do. For me, it's, it's all about like, you got to take action. Go and just do it. And then you're going to know the answer for sure. But like sitting around and like really thinking about it, like I love it. I'm curious about it. You're going to be debating this for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Go and do. What would you like to say to your Young Nails community on Facebook? What would you like to say to them? So I, I posted this. I'll post this on the page. What awesome. do you want to say to them? To our Young Nails community, we, you guys know how much we are passionate about our community. Um, we are sincerely, like, we have so much uh, gratitude for, like, just the interaction. If you take the time to watch our content, to use our product – like that right there is so much fuel for us to keep coming back and, and giving 
much, much, much more. But honestly, for me, James, like to our community, it's just a, it's a thank you. Yeah. It's just a simple thank you for um, either watching us, consuming our content, or using our products. Hugely, hugely appreciate it. And some people out there who are now maybe new to you, where they can find you guys on social media and online. Absolutely. So on all the different platforms, um, it's Young Nails Inc., I-N-C, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Snapchat, pretty much even we have a we have a weekly like nail business podcast that we do. All of it is at Young Nails Inc. Perfect. Inc. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so long. much for that. Was he'll a be back. Lot he'll fun. be back. We're gonna bring his brother. It's look like brother on here next for sure. <laughs> you guys, so you can follow us. Extra connections. We're on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Speaker.com. We're on the After Party, which is their IG and Twitter are T H A After Party. So that's T H A After Party on both of those on those low platforms. We're on Facebook at under Extra Connections Show. You can follow me where all James Lott Juniors are sold at James Lott Jr. on all social media platforms. You just type in my name. I am everywhere. If you like the music you heard, go to my SoundCloud page. Go there. It's James Lott Jr. also. Go there. YouTube, JLJ Media. I am everywhere. I am everywhere you want to be to connect with you on any level. That's what I'm there for. We're here every Monday. Next week is Miami McKinley, my friend who's a licensed therapist who's so good. She's so good. She's going to be on here next week. We're going to talk about all kinds of life things and why therapy is good. <laughs> therapy is good, folks. It's good for you. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And I want to thank Miss Brittany in the booth doing what doing, she does very well over there. And everyone out there for watching, I love you guys. See you next time. After the show, it's the after party there. After the party, it's the hotel lobby there. After the Belvedere, then it's probably Chris. And after the original, it's probably this. Yes.